country I ain't been on. I had been over here in over a year. And it wasn't exactly my, I, well actually, I mean it was my choice to come here. I mean I had the choice whether or not I wanted to come here. But, things led up to me ending up over here because this was not in my top, it wasn't even in my top five choices of where I wanted to go. So, in the last video I talked about the headache that I had in Laredo. wasn't just Laredo like it was I had things kind of pile up on me a little bit so before I got to Laredo I had started noticing that I was hearing what sounded like an exhaust leak I was hearing a tss, 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 kind of noise and I was like well that don't sound right So, and it was early in the morning. I had, uh, well, let's see, is that how, I can't remember if that's how I played it. Maybe it was in the evening whenever I noticed it, or when I heard it. It was first thing in the morning whenever I, I saw it during my pre-trip, I think is how. But anyway, uh, and I'll put a picture of the exhaust leak somewhere in here.
it was cracked on what I was calling like the flex pipe. Uh, it's the exhaust side of the turbo. Uh, Freightliner was calling it a bellows assembly. Uh, it's it's one solid. I guess it's one solid pipe that comes off the turbo that runs down to the one box. Uh, and I think there might be a couple of sensors or something like that down there towards the one box. But it's just held on by I think a bracket and uh, the exhaust clamps on, on the top and the bottom end, if I understand. Everybody talked like it was a simple fix. Well, I was trying to find some place that I could get it into after I made my delivery on Friday, which is what I was scheduled to do. And hopefully have the truck back by Monday evening because I had a load scheduled for Tuesday morning after the Memorial weekend. Everybody talked like they couldn't get to it. Like the one in Ardmore said that they couldn't touch it till Tuesday. Tulsa told me they wouldn't be able to touch it till Thursday. The location in Oklahoma City talked like they would be able to get to it fairly quick. Especially considering their 24 7 shop. Now they did tell me they were going to run a, a partial crew over the weekend. But they still talk like it was only like a one or two day deal, no big deal. So, all the crap with the whole Laredo load goes down. You know, it turns out to be Sunday before I can deliver the load. Um, so Sunday, I take the truck to the Oklahoma City, the, the premier truck group, the Freightliner premier truck group or whatever. So I take it to them, and I call them before I take it to them because I want to reconfirm that they, you know, they don't think this is going to be an extended time frame on this. You know, um, and they, you know, they tell me then, no, oh, no, it shouldn't be too bad. Huh. Y'all ever have one of those moments where you don't know why you change lanes? I just did that. There's zero people anywhere around me, and I just changed lanes for some odd reason. Anyway, um, so anyway, I take the truck to them on Sunday. Monday morning, I, I wasn't Monday morning. I'd say Monday afternoon. I called them to kind of see if they'd had a chance to look at it yet. Get, you know, if they had had a chance to look at it, kind of get a time frame on when they thought I'd have it back. Um, they advised me that they had looked at it, um, that there was a recall on, I guess, the exhaust bracket, which is probably what caused it. They didn't tell me that's what caused the exhaust to crack, um, but I'm guessing if there was a recall on this bracket, um, it probably had something to so, so they ordered the parts for the recall. Um, I knew that they already had the bellows assembly uh, because I had talked to their parts department before I'd ever even took my truck to them because I wanted to make sure that they had the parts before, before I took my truck to them. So they tell me the recall parts have been ordered. Uh, as soon as they come in, they'll get started on it. I asked them to go ahead and do the 100,000 mile service on the truck while it was there. I told them, you know, uh, I made it plain and clear that the service wasn't my priority though, because it wasn't due yet. Uh, worst case scenario, I could get it done out on the road. Um, I mainly just wanted the truck fixed so that I, you know, could get back on the road. But if they had a chance to get the PM done while it was in there, go ahead and do it. So Tuesday rolls around, they still don't have the part for the recall. Wednesday rolls around, they got all the parts. They tell me that they're going to get on it. Uh, Thursday rolls around, it's still not done. They 
told me, I don't even remember what they told me at this point in time now, but they did tell me that it was going to be in the shop that evening and that it would be done well before morning. So I thought, great, I can pick my truck up Friday morning, be ready to roll. Friday morning I call. Now actually I called, I take that back, I called at midnight. Um, because I, I just happened to wake up and I was curious about whether or not the truck was in the shop or not. So I called and they reassured me that the truck was in the shop and it was almost done is what they told me. So I went to sleep, I wake up Friday morning, I call and the guy that answers the phone Friday morning doesn't understand what happened but nothing got done on the truck. Nothing was done. He told me that a part was got ordered, and I said, what part got ordered? He said, oh, we had to order the fuel filters. They were the wrong ones. At that moment in time, I kind of bit my lip because I was on the verge of just losing my crap completely. And I told him then, I said, I'm not worried about the fuel filters. It's not even due yet. I just need the truck fixed. I told him, I said, I want my truck put together. Don't worry about doing the service on it. I'm coming to get it in a couple of hours. I said, fix the exhaust leak, do the bracket. I'm coming to get it. It, it, it had blown my mind that this truck was there for over a week, or not over a week, but almost a week and yet the thing had not even been serviced nor did they have the right fuel filters for it i'm so irritated at this moment like i'm like i'm losing money by the day losing money by the day and now you're telling me that i gotta wait another day and in my mind is if they'd have fixed it and had it back to me saturday morning that did me no good at all there's no way i'm gonna find a load till monday morning anyway so here we are, and even if that, even if they do get the part in and they fix it, I've lost another two more days over this, you know? So I told them, I said, I'm not worried about the fuel filters, just put my truck together so I can come and get it. So I show up at noon to pick my truck up, and surprise, surprise, it's done. Um, I've yet to see an invoice on it. That's another thing. They didn't have an invoice ready for me. Um, they've yet to send me an invoice on it. Um, the guy told me that they, the funny thing, so within that couple of hours, they got my bellows assembly done. They got the recall on the bracket done. They told me they did the oil change and they put a new air filter in it. They did not do the fuel filters because they didn't have the right ones apparently. But it's funny to me now whenever I get irritated and tell them I'm coming to get my truck. Like my thoughts was is if they had if they couldn't get it fixed, I was going to take it somewhere else. Um, but it was just interesting to me that once I got to the point where I'm like, you know what, I'm just coming to get my truck. Either put it together so I can come pick it up or button it back up where I can come get it and take it somewhere else. It's interesting to me how from that time frame to noon, just within that couple hours, they was able to get the amount of work done that they did. And that's because it was only a couple hour job. It should have never taken the better part of a week. So now here we are, Friday afternoon. And that's, so the other thing, so I show up there at noon and I kind of understand why things ain't getting done around there. There's like a half a dozen people behind the counter jacking their jaws, not doing nothing including mechanics and uh 
I say half, there's half a dozen people behind the counter that's just jacking their jaws. Then you got the two people that are working the counter that are answering phones and trying to deal with customers. And uh, nobody's helping them at all. Nobody's helping grab phones. Nobody's helping, you know. So I kind of understand and see why it was taking so long because apparently nothing's getting done around there. Everybody's hanging out behind the counter jacking their jaws. But, so by the time the guy behind the counter gets a chance to finally get to me and give me my keys and tell me where my truck is at, uh, and then I get my truck hooked to the trailer, you know, it's 2 o'clock Friday afternoon now. All the loads that I had been eyeballing that I wanted to, you know, that was coming out of Oklahoma City, uh, had little to no deadhead on them, you know. Uh, I was looking at a load that was going to Pennsylvania that paid very well. I was looking at a load that was going to Virginia that paid very well. Uh, you know, all these loads are gone now. You know, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, there were still a couple of pretty decent loads coming out of Tulsa. Uh, but there was no way I could make it there before their cutoff to pick up the loads. So, now I'm stuck in a position where I'm like, well, what is left that I can actually get to? Because now it's either I call it a weekend and just go back to the house and sit all weekend, or I just find something, something that I can get behind this truck that will pay me some sort of money by Monday. So what I find is a dropping hook out of Dallas. It can be picked up anytime Friday or Saturday. Now with all the deadhead that I got, you gotta remember I, I deadheaded from Ardmore to Oklahoma City to get the truck fixed. Now I deadheaded from Ardmore all the way to Dallas. rate on this load isn't going to look good in the end <clears throat> but for what it was from where it was going from point A to point B it's a good load now it's not going to an ideal area but it allowed me to run some miles accumulate some revenue and get some cash flow rolling again. You know, um, it's one of the biggest things about being out here is you got to keep cash flow moving. If, if you go stagnant, it don't take long for things to start piling up, and you know, and, and accounts to start going the wrong direction. And that's something that I'm not a big fan of. I don't like setting for too long, especially if it's not planned. Now it's one thing to take a week off because you got a vacation plan. You know, you prepare for that. But you prepare for downtime too. But it's it's a different kind of preparing for. It, you know. Uh, you know, when you plan for a vacation, that's a good preparation, you know, it's it's something you look forward to. But when you're when you're down for a week because of downtime, you're basically sitting around twiddling your fingers. Or twiddling your thumbs waiting for the shop to call you and tell you your truck's ready you know you don't really want to get off and get into doing anything because there's a chance your truck might get finished you know so you spend a lot of time just sitting around doing nothing waiting for your truck to get done and I'm not a fan of that I'm not at all um, so yeah so that's what I'm on. Uh, this load is going to Utah. Uh, I'm actually running a route that I've never ran before. Uh, normally when I come up out of Texas, going up towards the Salt Lake area, uh, run 287 out of Texas, 
up to I-40 and then run I-40 over to either, I can run it two different ways. Uh, a lot of times it would, I would base my route on the weather, um, but this time of year, weather's not really a, really a factor. Um, <clears throat> but I'd run either I-40 to uh, around the Gallup, New Mexico area and then go north out of there or run all the way to Flagstaff and run north. Um, I think that's like US 89 or something like that out of Flagstaff. I can't remember. But this time, and I've eyeballed this route a few times, um, you can run north out of Albuquerque and catch US 550 and run up to... Uh, back her down just a little bit um, 550 to uh, I'm on US 64 right now I'll run this over here a little ways farther and then I'll pick up I think it's US 491 up to US 191 I think it's the route runs you up through Moab and all that. Um, this does show to be the shortest route. Um, Apple Maps has always said that it's the shortest, fastest route. Now, I don't always uh, follow Apple Maps route because, you know, a lot of it's, it's not based on truck routing. And um, a lot of times in a truck, you're can't move as fast as the four-wheelers can so uh, sometimes the routing is not very accurate I mean it's never accurate time-wise but uh, but I figured since I had time on this load that we would check this route out and uh, right now I'm running through uh, I think it's Bloomfield, New Mexico. Uh, this has really been the only slowdown. Um, I come, no I went north out of Albuquerque on 25, grabbed US 550. Uh, 550's four lanes, 70 mile an hour. Now I'm not running 70. Uh, <clears throat> hasn't been too many really big hills or anything like that. It's been. Uh, there's been some gradual climbs, but nothing that has really slowed me down. So, still early into this route, so we'll see how it turns out. So far, I'm not, not mad about it. Uh, like I said, this has really been the only town that I've actually, size-wise, that I've ran through and had to slow down been a couple of small towns where the speed limit has dropped to 55 but it was only for a short period then picked right back up so so anyway I'll quit rambling uh, and let y'all see some scenery
Well, hope y'all enjoyed that little bit of scenery. I know I did. It's been over a year since I've been west of I-35, so it's been a while since I've saw this part of the country. And um, it truly is a beautiful, beautiful side of our country. I, I, I absolutely love this side of our country. Um, I'm not a big fan of driving a truck over here, but um, in my opinion, it is the prettier side of the country. I absolutely love the Northwest, uh, the Columbian Gorge up there, um, that whole area up there. I love, that's some of my favorite scenery is up around this area and over there, but um, not a fan of driving a truck over here though. But you know, sometimes you got to take what you can get and this load was all I could get really. So, um, so we dealt with it. But um, I know my last couple of videos have kind of, kind of seemed like I complaining or, you know, whatever. Um, it's not that I'm, I'm complaining. Uh, I, I want to clarify that. I'm not, I'm not just complaining. Um, I will, I mean, I am complaining a little bit on Premier truck group out of Oklahoma City they kind of let me down um, um, you know that's and that's just part of it I get that um, but a lot of what I'm just trying to show um, like I said I'm not trying to complain I just this is real this is what you deal with on a regular basis um, you know there's going to be weeks where it's good and there's going to be weeks where it's not so good. And right now, the market's not doing so hot. So it makes things a little harder than what it should be. Um, but with the market being like that, any little hiccup, any little trip, trip up or whatever, it just makes it even harder. So, um, you know, that's just just part of it. Um, like I said, I just want, I want to show the real side of things sometimes. I feel like... A lot of times what you see out there isn't you know you, you you see the good side of it all the time you don't always see the bad side of it and I'm here to tell you it's not always rainbows and butterflies um, this line of work can be life-changing for some people um, one of my last trainees uh, worked a dead-end job and he is still at prime he's doing very well over there and he tells me all the time like coming out here and driving a truck was life-changing for him um, financially and stability wise it has changed his life basically and so if you're in one of them positions where you know you're kind of in a dead-end job living paycheck to paycheck um, you can make pretty good money out here and like I've said before you don't have to be a lease operator. You can be a company driver. You can do regional. I mean, there's multiple ways to do it. But there are downfalls. And, you know, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to complain or anything like that. I'm just trying to show the real side of it. And, um, you know, when you're, when you're trying to do something new, there's always going to be... Um, that learning curve you know you're you're kind of you're new to the game um kind of learning things the hard way sometimes the hard knock life i guess you could say but um so yeah but i'm not gonna keep rambling um this video is probably stretched out long enough already but but like always i appreciate y'all if you're still here hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button and stay safe Keep the rubber side down and shiny side up, and I'll catch you on the next one.